Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about the latest regarding Sergi Roberto and what his future role could be with Barcelona if he does sign a contract renewal with this club. We're also going to be talking about how Dani Alves has received a two-match suspension, meaning that he will miss the next two La Liga matches, which will be against Espanyol and Valencia, and what that means for someone like Serginho Dest. Then lastly, we are going to quickly touch on Mateo Alemán and his brand new role that he could be receiving in the very near future. So all of this is going to be discussed within today's video. So let's first talk about the brand new details regarding Sergi Roberto because many are questioning what is going to be the role of Sergi Roberto if he does renew because look I get it like we have so many players now that are being integrated into this squad. When it comes to the midfielders we have it fully covered. When it comes to the right back position we have players that are covering that position and there is rumors that Barcelona are looking for a brand new right back so many are questioning what is going to be the brand new role of Sergi Roberto. And what's so crazy about this is that Xavi has actually been someone that's been serious about integrating this player in in the squad. He does not mind having this player for the long term. But it does say here, according to Javi Miguel, the club is betting on Araujo and Gavi, two pillars in Xavi's project. Xavi also has Sergio Roberto in his plans, but more as a player that will come in as the 16th, 17th player in the squad. Now, what does that mean? That basically means this. Think about our starting 11. If we were to make five substitutions after assembling that starting 11 throughout the game, Sergi Roberto would still not appear because he would be considered as the 6th or 7th substitution of that game. That is how much Barcelona and the sporting directors are relying on Sergi Roberto. So Xavi does see him as some sort of reinforcement, but he cannot rely on him fully. Now for a second there, I actually thought that Sergi Roberto was going to be receiving a massive role, like he was going to be having a big plan with Xavi because after seeing that match between Barcelona and Atletico Madrid, Dani Alves had a very interesting role. He he was playing some sort of as a pivot within the midfield right next to Sergio Busquets. Like his execution on that game was for him to play make, was to connect with the players and that allowed Sergio Busquets to sit higher. So in a way, Dani Alves was part of that midfield. It's very similar to what Pep has been doing with Cancelo at Manchester City or sometimes we have seen that with Kyle Walker. This position is basically called a inverted right back, a right back that does come into the middle and play make in the middle of the field. And I'm like, okay, great. Like whatever Dani Alves is doing here, just imagine what Sergio Roberto could do because he is a natural midfielder. He is someone who has been playing as a midfielder throughout his youth years and also in the first team. Maybe we could see Sergio Roberto become much more efficient within that role. But now we are seeing here, according to all of these reports, that Xavi does want to use Sergio Roberto but only as the 16th or 17th option. And because this player is going to be seeing the bench way more than seeing the pitch most of the time, that is probably one of the biggest reasons on why Joan Laporta and Matola Lamont are offering Sergio Roberto a very low salary contract. Now look, would I be surprised if Roberto and the agent says we're going to be leaving, we're going to go to a different club because this contract, it is just something that we cannot agree with. I could see Sergio Roberto and the agent saying we're going to be leaving. Like I don't blame them because I understand that as someone who is 29, 30 years old, you're still in the prime of your career. You want to look for a different club where you can't play football. And that one club could be Manchester City because we have heard before, like a few months back, that City and Pep Guardiola were interested in someone like Sergio Roberto and it's for the exact same reason like what I have discussed earlier in this video. It is because maybe Pep Guardiola might see Sergio Roberto as a inverted right back. Basically what he does with Cancelo today and sometimes Kyle Walker. So right now the future regarding this player here it is very uncertain but it is also very clear on how he could be used in Barcelona. And it does say here according to Adria Alberts, Sergio Roberto's environment believe that Barcelona do not want to renew him and they are pessimistic. They insist on having a meeting with the club this week and they do believe that the club is taking too long. So if you guys are wondering what does it mean by Barcelona having another meeting with Sergio Roberto, that is because they have actually had a first offer and a first meeting with this player. But it did not go well in the end and now they are looking to see when they can find that second meeting, that second offer and hopefully find an agreement with this player. But I do believe that Sergio Roberto is a player that could stay. I think that he is someone that is good enough to be an impact sub in this club and nothing more. Now let's move on towards the next topic of today and let's talk about Dani Alves because it does say here and it is official that Dani Alves was handed a two-match suspension following his red card against Atletico Madrid. He will miss the game against Espanyol and Valencia. So look, I think that this decision here is a ridiculous call. Like I understand that he made a mistake in that game. I understand why Dani Alves was given that red card. I'm not going to be speaking too much on that, but to see Dani Alves out for two matches, like that is almost taking it to the extreme. And Xavi does have a lot to think about when it comes to Alves being on present for the 
these two games that are going to be very important because Alves has shown to have character on the pitch, mentality on the pitch, have a great impact to not just the opposition, but to the players. He inspires these players fully and maximally. So now we are going to have to deal with these tough teams without Dani Alves. And the only player that I do really think of when it comes to Alves sitting out, someone who can bring the technique and bring the football on that right flank, it is going to be Serginho Dest. Like Dest continues to be pulled into these greater demands because recently we have seen Xavi say, I'm going to be taking out Dani Alves for the Europa League. I'm going to be bringing in Dest because I do rely on this player. And I do believe that he could be good enough to deliver in the absence of Alves. And now we are seeing here today that not only is Dest being called up to perform in the Europa League, but now we're going to be seeing these next two games, which is against Espanyol de Valencia, where Dest is going to have to play like he will be starting. There is no other option. We could see Ronald Araujo on that right center back position, but I do believe that Barcelona, Xavi, they are going to be going for Dest on that right back position. And hopefully, right, Dest does deliver. This is the biggest opportunity for him to really prove to this club that he is Barcelona material, that he has what it takes to grow within this club and be that next right back that many of us wanted him to be. And now lastly, we are going to just quickly touch on what's currently going on in the boardroom because after seeing how Ferran Reveted has stepped down and that he is no longer going to be the CEO of Barcelona, now there is brand new details regarding who could be the replacement of Ferran Reveted. Now look, like I've always said, when it comes to this CEO here, he did some great work within these past seven months. I have a feeling, right, that whatever he has done within these past seven months, he basically accomplished his goals, which is to lay out what is going to be the future of this club. And now he is looking to see how he can find a way out. And many people are saying that, oh, this is going to be a crisis. This is like fire going on in the boardroom. Laporta doesn't know how to keep his own men. Like, I don't think, I don't think it's like that serious. I think that Reveted just did what he had to do, which is to give Barcelona a clear plan. And that's basically it. These things do happen. So now we are in a position where John Laporta is going to have to find a replacement for this CEO. And when it comes to the latest on this replacement, it does say here, according to Ferran Correa, so Laporta values betting on Mateo Aleman as the new CEO of Barcelona. Aleman has total confidence of Laporta and he has already held his position in Mallorca as well as in Valencia. Now, notice what this report does say. It says that John Laporta bets on Mateo Aleman to take on that role. There has also been other reports that came out shortly right after that said that as things currently do stand, Mateo Aleman will not become the new CEO because he does feel very comfortable in his current position. So there is maybe a few board members, also John Laporta, that wants to see Mateo Aleman take on that role. But right now, Aleman says, no, I'm okay. I'm comfortable. I like what I do right now. I just do not see myself in this position. And to be very honest, in my opinion, I do see Mateo Aleman as the CEO of Barcelona. Of course, it's going to be up to him, but he has the background of being a CEO, like what it does say on this report. Like he has been the CEO of Mallorca and Valencia. And currently right now, he's basically that man that works on the transfers like 99% of the time he does the operational work like what type of transfer does make sense for Barcelona financially how could we sell this player to its absolute max that is basically his role in Barcelona becoming the CEO of this club of course Mateo Aleman is going to have to take more responsibility within this club but we are going to have to wait and see how all of this does unfold whether he does take this role or not of course I am going to bet that Mateo Aleman is going to be taking the role because he does have the backing he is very smart he does operational work very well any brand new details regarding Barcelona's brand new CEO, we are going to be talking about it here in this YouTube channel. That is going to be wrapping up today's Barcelona Daily News. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are new here, welcome to the channel. Please like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you guys in the next video.